what we can see in the diagram here then is the kind of key bits we're going to be looking at through this summary. So we're going to be having a look at what the nucleus is doing, what the rough endoplasmic reticulum is doing, what role the Golgi apparatus has, etc. So this just gives you a bit of an overview of the kind of bits to be looking out for. Because one thing that they can do on exam papers is give you microscope images, for example, of parts of a cell and ask you to identify certain bits. So this just gives you that little overview of some of those key parts that we should be able to recognize. If we start off then at the most logical place, the beginning, then we're going to start inside the nucleus. Now, when we're inside the nucleus, this is where we find a complete copy of the DNA. And what's going to happen is the gene for the protein that we want to synthesize is going to be transcribed into a strand of mRNA. Now, mRNA just stands for messenger RNA. We're not going to look at the process by which that happens today in this video, but there will be a video looking at that in more detail later on. So once we've made that mRNA, we don't just make a single mRNA molecule. What we're actually going to do is make many copies of that mRNA. The reason for that is we don't just literally want to make a single protein. We want to make many copies of that protein. So if we've got lots of mRNA molecules, each of those can then obviously make protein. Therefore, we can make it faster. It's a more efficient process. Those mRNA molecules are able to pass out of the nucleus through the nuclear pores in the nuclear envelope. So if we have a look at my amazing diagram, I mean, I am astounded at my own drawing skills as well as you are, I'm sure. So what we have down here then, okay, obviously we are inside the nucleus here. So this is our DNA strand, the black bit, and that little red bit there is going to be the gene that we actually want to transcribe. So what we're going to do is go through the process to transcribe the gene to make our little bit of the mRNA. Okay, so that's our mRNA strand for that particular gene. That mRNA is then going to pass out of the nucleus through one of these nuclear pores, and we can always spot the envelope of our nucleus because it has that double membrane with the pores there. So the next thing that happens is our little mRNA strand, here it now is, is actually going to attach to a ribosome on our rough endoplasmic reticulum, the RER. Now, when that's actually happened, what's going to happen is the mRNA is going to be translated and therefore we can assemble the protein. Again, details of this when we look at protein synthesis properly. That protein that we've just synthesized is then going to move into the cisterna of our rough endoplasmic reticulum and just move through it. Once these little vesicles arrive at the Golgi apparatus, then they fuse with the cis face. So this is our cis face of the Golgi on this side here. Now, once the protein is within the Golgi apparatus, this is where protein modification happens. If we think back to our previous video on our membrane bound organelles. And what's then going to happen is once it's been modified and passed through our Golgi, it's then going to create these secretory vesicles from the transvase, and this is our transvase on this side. And those little secretory vesicles are going to then be transported again through our cytoskeleton to the plasma membrane itself. Once those secretory vesicles arrive at the plasma membrane, then they fuse with it. And once they've actually fused, what happens is our little protein is then going to be released from the cell. So this is our plasma membrane. 
and what we can see is our little vesicle has come in, it's fused with the plasma membrane, and in doing so, it's then able to release the protein outside the cell. When we're talking about these proteins being released outside the cell by that fusing of the vesicle with the plasma membrane, we're referring to a process called exocytosis. Now, if we actually just break that down a little bit, remember, exo is all to do with basically out or outside. So if you think about uh, some of your GCSE chemistry, you probably did exothermic reactions where heat is given out. So exocytosis, out, it's basically moving things out of the cell. Now, the actual definition for exocytosis is the bulk transport of molecules too large to pass through a cell membrane, even through those channel or carrier proteins out of the cell. So realistically, what we're doing here is we're moving large molecules out of the cell that basically wouldn't be able to do so through other means. And hopefully we remember from where we've looked at membranes, things like channel proteins, carrier proteins are a usual method for this. But if that can't happen, we need to use this exocytosis process. This is an active process. And hopefully you remember if it's active, that means we do have an energy requirement to bring it about. Hopefully now that we've gone through this video, you've got a better understanding of how all those different organelles that we've looked at during our cell ultrastructure reviews have actually come together to carry out one particular process of protein synthesis. There will be a video looking at the actual detail of protein synthesis later on, and obviously look out for those links. If you get a question about proteins in general, then we could be talking about the structure of proteins from our biological molecules. So we could be going into those primary, secondary, tertiary, etc. So get used to looking for those connections between these different parts of the A-level biology specification so that when you're looking at an A-level question in its entirety, you can pick out that actually this could have these interwoven parts from several different aspects of the course. As always, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see when another video on our A-level biology is uploaded.